welcome you all to this course on uh, electron diffraction and imaging. Uh, in the last class, we discussed about the property of a lens, okay, how it uh, gives rise to diffraction, okay, as well as uh, imaging from the same region of the sample, right. Both the information we can obtain about the sample. Then mentioned also about, okay, uh, different types of diffraction modes. One is a parallel diffraction, okay, that is what we normally do in a diffraction beam where a coherent beam of uh, parallel beam, okay, when we use a parallel beam we say that it is a plane wave, okay, when we use a wave uh, concept to describe it, a plane wave is falling onto the sample surface and then you look at the diffraction interference phenomena which is occurring, okay, that is what a conventional diffraction is all about. Okay. Today what we will do it is that I will just mention a little bit about parallel diffraction and then we will discuss a little bit about uh, the other two types of diffraction are there, convergent as well as divergent beam uh, diffraction. Okay. You have studied this concept of uh, reciprocal lattice, correct? Okay. This is a BCC lattice. Okay, for which a reciprocal lattice is given. The property of a cubic lattice is that the plane normal and the direction have got the same indices, correct? Okay, that is only for cubic, so that is why I have just taken this. Okay. If you assume that the beam is uh, falling in this direction, okay, then what will happen is that for electron diffraction, since the beam energy is very high or the wavelength is very small and the Bragg angle is small less than 1 degree, okay. The, almost all the planes which are parallel to the beam direction will give rise to because here these vectors are reciprocal lattice vectors which are perpendicular to the uh, diffraction plane. So the reciprocal lattice uh, plane, this plane if we consider it is the one which will give rise to all the diffraction spots as far as electron diffraction is concerned. That is right? Is it clear? Okay. So for 0, 0, 1 if we consider then if see, this is the origin, this reflection will come 0 to 0, 2, 0, 0 will come, 2 to 0 reflections will come. Okay. All these reflections will come. We can choose any direction and find out the reciprocal lattice plane which is perpendicular to it and that is the one which is going to be the diffraction pattern, we get it in a transmission electron microscope. Okay. But we tilt the sample, we, the same region it may be a single crystal, when we tilt it we are looking for the diffraction pattern from different direction. But then when we index it, we should index it in such a way that there is a consistency is there in the indexing. Okay. And how will the diffraction pattern will appear in the electron microscope also when we do a tilting from one direction to the other? That is what I will just describe it now. Okay. The another aspect which I said that to index the diffraction pattern, I mentioned that we can use uh, stereographic projection. Okay. How do we use the stereographic projection? Here if you see it, this stereographic projection, the same direction which we mentioned 0, 0, 1 direction the beam is falling, this is for a cubic system. Okay. Stereographic projection, what is the information which it gives? All the angular relationship between the planes which is being given, but then we have to apply the appropriate uh, uh, structure factor rules, okay, extinction rules to identify which are the reflections will come. That is between 1, 0, 0 and uh, 0, 1, 0 plane are between 2, 0, 0 and 0, 2, 0 plane, the angle remains that same, right? Angular relationship does not change at all. So this reciprocal lattice section is being shown here, okay? If you look at this section, this is the origin, this is the 2, 0, 0 where reciprocal lattice vector, this is the 0, 2, 0, these are all the others which are indexed. This is how a diffraction pattern will look like in the electron microscope. Okay. These are all the position spots will come 
and here the angular relationship bit is being maintained that is mentioned that between 200 zero zero and 110 zero zero it's 45 degree 0 to 0 and this angle is also 45 degree okay that's what is being done you look at the stereographic projection this stereographic projection if you look at it from here to here this is 100 zero zero direction correct 100 zero zero comes here and if this is the vector corresponding to that parallel to it then 0 1 0 or the 0 to 0 should come in this 90 degree away from it that is what essentially happens and the indexing can be done from here to here to here in the same way if you go from this vector you can index all the diffraction spots correctly you understand that ok is it clear suppose you assume that we are tilting the sample and going to 0 1 1 zone then what will happen ok then you have to if we try to use this we have to imagine how it is going to be because this is a three, three dimensional figure it is going to be difficult but if I use this what I can say that 0 1 1 is here so all spots which are 90 degree away from it will be the spa, poles which will be lying on the so 1 0 0 1 1 bar 1 0 1 bar 1 ok yeah, these are all the ones which are going to come no this will not come ok 1 1 will come this is how the reflections will come here correct now what is important is that when we take this zone also the 1 0 0 direction remains the same and that has not changed in the stereographic projection right so you see this diffraction spot here 2 0 0 comes here ok then 0 1 bar 0 comes here ok that is here and the next part 2 bar 0 0 in between spots will come. So, if you look at it if you tilt and reach this particular zone ok this is exactly the way the spots will appear in the screen on the screen we will be seeing it and the indexing has to be done this way. If we use the stereographic projection ok we will not make any mistake in indexing ok exactly that same way we will be you see that here from here in the clockwise direction we view you move from here this way you can do the complete indexing you understand that ok. If we tilt that is instead of reaching it frame 1 bar 1 1 if you try to reach it ok then what will happen then 1 1 0 ok 90 degree away from it will be 1 1 0 uh, 1 0 1 and 0 1 bar 1 these are all the spots which are going to be there correct. Now you see this diffraction spot, uh, pattern how it will appear this is exactly the way spot will appear and the indexing 1 1 0 is uh, here ok 1 0 1 will be coming here and 0 1 bar 1 is there this is the way indexing is being done that means that when we tilt from one to the other the same sample in the microscope and see it we should note down in which direction because we have fixed a coordinate system with respect to a coordinate system we tilt it in positive or negative direction ok and when we do that tilt then once we know the crystallography we know which direction the beam is going to come into the sample and depending upon that indexing has to be done in a specific way for which you can see from this example that the stereographic projection helps to index it correctly. This is essentially a section which has been taken free m from the reciprocal lattice ok that also we can do that. But the way the relatively the way in which it will appear on the screen when we tilt it this is the way the appearance of the different spots will be. So, we get the spots but indexing has to be done correctly because this also can be indexed in any other way if you choose an another zone wrongly correct. So, that is why uh, when we wanted to do defect analysis to find out what all the various types of defects are present and their characteristics indexing of that we may have to go from one zone to another to view the defect in various directions. But when we do that we should index the diffraction pattern also very correctly this we will take it up as an assignment later in a class we will try to do it ok. But I just wanted to 
uh, let you know that this is the way it is being done. Is it clear? So yes. How can we differentiate the diffraction pattern where a beam is uh, passing through 0, 0, 1, 1, No, because 0, 1 and 0, 0, 1, 1. Which one? No, that ambiguity always will remain. You have to choose one direction as this one and with respect to that once that is fixed, that ambiguity is not there. No, no, it is not a, even if it is a polycrystalline material, in a TEM you can make the beam fall on a one single grain and do all the analysis there. That is what we are talking about. Which one? How do we know the beam direction is there? The beam direction is always we look into the sample from the top of the beam. And the crystallographic axis you fix it with respect to x, y and this is opposite to it. Okay, you have to follow a convention. Which one? This is all done after analysis. That you take the pattern, after you get the pattern, then you have to analyze it and index it. This is the way the spots will appear. Now, if we have to index it, if we use the stereogram, then the indexing will be done properly. Otherwise, we can put this as 1 1 1 also and index it if you do not follow any of this logic. Okay. That is because the tilt which we are giving it is from here to here is 54 degree, okay. from here to here is uh, uh, 45 degree okay. and which direction we tilt it all these things are well known. This has to be noted down when we do the work. Okay. Is it clear? Okay. This is for uh, 1 bar 1 2. Okay. The same way it is being done. So, one such pattern is being shown which is for an FCC lattice. Okay, a nickel base super alloy. Here, this is the central spot or the undifracted spot, okay, direct beam, and these are all the scattered beam. If we allow that entire diffraction pattern to form an image, then what will happen? The diffraction, the image due to every diffraction spot as well as the central beam, they overlap on each other. So, contrast will not be good. Because we know that if we look at a beam which is scattered in one particular direction, the intensity variation depends upon how much is the scattering which has taken place in other directions. If you allow all of them to merge together, the contrast will be very poor. So, what we do is we put an aperture around the central beam okay, and then form an image that is what we call it as a bright field image. Correct? This part is a diffraction spot. Uh, this is the spot which I used it. This is a super lattice reflection from the precipitate. Okay. I had put an aperture around this spot. Okay. That is this diffraction pattern aperture is put. So, because this aperture is in the back focal plane, that is where the diffraction pattern is there, I can introduce the aperture just below it and choose only this spot. Then the image which I get it is made up of only where the beam has scattered into this direction. So, that these only regions appear bright. This way we can identify that uh, this part corresponds to M23 C6 precipitates. Now, I can tell that this is these are all where that M23 C6 precipitates are located at the grain boundary. Okay. You understand this is how an identification is done. Okay. Similarly, you look at here. Here what is being done? Okay. This is a diffraction pattern which is taken okay, for another type of a precipitate in the same alloy. Okay. Here various super lattice reflections are there. What I mention here is what is the super lattice reflection which has been used for imaging it. If I put an aperture around this particular one okay, in the back focal plane and use that to form the image, I will be getting an image like this. If I put an aperture around this one half zero, one of these parts, then I get an image like this. If I put it around this one, one zero zero type, I get an image like this. Zero one zero is here. If I put it, I get an image like this. So, each of these images show the type of precipitates, where they are distributed, their morphology, all this information we can get it from the diffraction pattern. Okay. Pattern remains the same but different spots 
Sometimes the sparse code all correspond to the same variant. Here there are different variants are there which I had mentioned earlier about orientation variants. Okay, these are all different orientation variants which we can identify. Okay. Is it clear? This is an another example which I am showing it. Okay. Now here if you look at it this looks like almost perfectly aligned. right? The beam is passing through 0, 0, 0,01 because uh, uh, the intensity of the spots appear almost that same. Okay. But suppose we wanted to find out what is the exact orientation, how do we find out? Apart from our uh, visually looking at it and making a guess, there is no other way we can do it here. right? For this purpose, we can use what is called as a Kikuchi diffraction. Okay. What is Kikuchi diffraction? It is nothing but a divergent beam, if we use it, that will give rise to a diffraction pattern. That is called as a Kikuchi diffraction. Okay. It could be a divergent or it could be a convergent beam, it does not matter. Both of them will give rise to, which we will come later. With specifically with respect to a sample, suppose the sample is a thick specimen. Okay. If you take a diffraction pattern from it, apart from the diffraction spots, you see that there are lot of bright streaks are seen and uh, similarly dark streaks are also seen. Correct? What are responsible for these streaks? Okay. That is the whole question. Okay. How this is being interpreted, these streaks and what all information we can get from this. Okay. The first thing is to understand how these Kikuchi patterns are generated. Okay. For which if you look at this, an incident beam electron which falls on the sample is highly monochromatic, very high energy, 200 keV energy. Okay. You assume that this sample is an amorphous sample. Okay. When it enters onto it, it can undergo an elastic scattering. Other than that, what is the other way in which a scattering could occur? Any inelastic scattering can take place? One, by phonon this one. Another is that uh, due to plasma losses, some energy could be lost. If assume that an electron has lost an energy by plasma interaction, okay, the generally the energy is 10 to 20, K, uh, 20 electron volt energy loss may be there. Then that point, yes, plasma. Uh, plasma losses is a collective oscillation of the electrons takes place. When the electron beam passes through the sample, it contains electrons are there. It gives some energy to these electrons also. That way it loses some energy. Okay. Uh, uh, this is called as a plasma oscillations in the sample. Okay. And that is called surface plasmons and bulk plasmons all them. But that energy loss is between uh, 0 to 20 electron volt. Okay. When such a loss is occurring and the inter amplitude or the intensity of that wave, okay, scattered beam in this direction, forward direction is maximum and as we go away from it the angle increases, the intensity reduces. This will give rise to overall a background intensity which will be there maximum at the center and fading away towards the edge. Is it clear? And this diffuse uh, scattering is what is responsible for the Kikuchi pattern. Okay? Because this sample which we have considered is essentially okay, uh, nothing but an amorphous sample which we considered. So, we will have only a uniform background intensity which will be there, correct. And here what I am showing is the k vector, okay, in all the directions it could be there. But if you look at the intensity, uh, intensity or the amplitude, this arrow shows the magnitude. So, it is maximum in the forward direction and it is decreasing. So, this gives rise to this particular form in which it will be varying. Okay. That is what we had seen in that uh, diffraction pattern which you had noticed. Okay. Now, suppose that sample is a crystalline material because it does not matter whenever some atoms are there, whether it is an amorphous or a crystalline, this process can occur in the sample. Correct. This does happen in the crystalline material also. Assume that it has occurred here. Then from this region, okay, electron with energy which has lost, these are all the incoherently scattered electrons which are coming in all the directions. If this plane is there, this electron which is coming in this particular direction, the electron wave, if this satisfies the Bragg angle, in all directions it is being scattered, 
but at this particular direction it satisfies the Bragg condition okay so there is a scattering which is taking place in this direction so intensity of the incident beam has come down so over the background now there will be a dip which will be coming okay now that same beam which, the beam which is scattered in this direction this also with respect to this plane it satisfies the Bragg condition correct so some beam is which is scattered into this particular direction but as I mentioned the intensity decreases with the angle of scattering so because of this this intensity decreases so it is not able to compensate for the decrease in intensity which has happened so it is the net effect which you see similarly the beam which is scattered in this direction it is above the overall background similarly the which is scattered in this direction after having lost something still some um, intensity is coming in this direction scattered beam these two add together this gives a increase in contrast okay that is why you find that the center of the diffraction pattern you get dark bands dark lines and away from it you see bright lines and the separation between them what does it correspond to the uh, uh, g vector correct and here you should understand that these ones and both of them and since we know this angle okay this is the direct beam this is the scattered 2 theta we can find out the lattice parameter very accurately from that this spacing can be determined and the source of the radiation is within that sample here correct when the source is within the sample what is the advantage of it if I tilt the sample like this the source is also within the sample so it will tilt by the same amount okay normally what happens in a uh, parallel diffraction beam okay if you see this is how the reciprocal lattice parts are there there is a streaking in this direction is there since the sample is uh, uh, thin okay and this is how the evolved sphere cuts correct so even if the evolved sphere is touching only this point here it is not touching still we can get the spots corresponding to them even if I tilt the sample by plus minus 5 degrees still some part of the evolved sphere can touch okay and we can still see the diffraction pattern but if you measure the distances some changes might have happened so lattice parameter measurement is not accurate but still the diffraction pattern can be seen but here the diffraction the Kikuchi pattern is extremely sensitive to the uh, tilt of that sample. So using this Kikuchi pattern, we can identify the beam orientation. Okay. So can you repeat why the intensity dips in the center? And the you see here, this is amplitude or an intensity. In the forward scatter direction, it is maximum. As the scattering angle theta increases, it decreases. So what will be its effect? on this direction so in this direction intensity is maximum part of it is scattered so in the overall background there is going to be a reduction in intensity is going to happen in the center and this particular one in this direction if you look at it the overall intensity of the beam which is falling is small though here also diffraction takes place what it contributes to it will be always less than what has been lost from here so the net effect what we see is a dip will be there similarly the beam which is scattered here in this direction is going to be more so corresponding to overall in this direction this adds to an increase in intensity okay but the loss which is going to take place here is not able to compensate for that so overall it is essentially an increase here it is a decrease okay so but this scattering is an incoherent beam which is generated that is monochromatic that undergoes between these planes an elastic scattering and that gives through a, a diffraction pattern which we call it as a Kikuchi diffraction is this clear and generally the thicker the sample then what will happen is that the incoherent scattering process probability increases so the intensity will be high extremely thin region it will be difficult to see Kikuchi pattern okay and another is that since source is within that sample we will be able to uh, when we tilt that sample this also tilts along with it okay 
then what, how will it appear the diffraction pattern? Okay. This is something like the beam which is uh, satisfying the Bragg condition, the two planes are like this, the source is here. So if it satisfies a Bragg angle, it is like a cone which is there with a particular angle which is falling on both the sides of that sample surface, right. And generally when we take a diffraction pattern, okay, we are keeping the uh, or it is falling on the screen which is below perpendicular to it. So when a cone is being cut by a, uh, a sheet of paper, it will give a hyperbola, okay. That is what it the uh, Kikuchi line should appear, but since the uh, camera constant is very large, it appears as a straight line, okay. Is it clear? Straight lines. This is what it uh, happens. Okay. What are the applications of this Kikuchi diffraction? One, accurate crystal orientation determination. Okay, we can do that using it. Lattice parameter I mentioned can be measured very accurately. Okay. Then misorientation. Whenever we want a quite often when we do analysis, sometimes we should know from the Bragg condition what is the extent to which the spot is misoriented to calculate that interest intensity contrast. For that we should know the uh, deviation from the Bragg condition because the deviation from the Bragg condition we have already said that when delta k okay, is a general one, when we consider reciprocal lattice section thin sample uh, that is small volume of the sample, okay, we notice that uh, not only at uh, g but at values away from g also exact Bragg condition also we get some intensity of the spots, correct. So this is we wrote it as g plus s, s is the slight deviation, okay. This will come to it later, okay. And this can be used for control tilting of the samples also. This is what uh, when you do uh, serious microscopy, you have to tilt that sample, Kikuchi pattern can be used as a guide to go from one zone to the other, okay. All these things a few example we will take, okay. The deviation from an exact Bragg condition, suppose here you see that this is satisfying a Bragg condition, here it is tilted quite a bit, okay. How do you get this information? Here if you look at it, this is the beam which is incident beam, diffracted beam, okay. The separation between them if we measure it R, okay, we can, uh, this will be uh, 2 theta will be equal to the tan 2 theta will be equal to r by l, correct? And since to the theta uh, angle is small, we will be able to write it in this way. And then if we tilt the sample a little bit, what will happen to Kukuchi pattern? The spot pattern remains the same. You see that here spot pattern remains the same, but the Kikuchi pattern has shifted, correct? So the Kikuchi pattern shifts a little since we know l, this shift we can measure it. Okay. This also using the same formula we can find out. Finally what happens is that this deviation yes in reciprocal space we can find out using if you just substitute and do some algebra you will be getting g squared x by kr where k is the 1 by lambda. Okay. This way we can find out what is going to be the deviation from the region. Okay. How is this deviation defined? This is the reciprocal lattice reflections which are there. This is the evolved sphere, okay. If the evolved sphere does not pass through the reciprocal lattice point, okay, that can always happen, okay. Then this is delta k, this is g and delta k plus s will be equal to g, right. Here s is positive. This is how it is defined. And how are the coordinates of s defined? It is defined with respect to a coordinate system which has chosen, that is in this direction it will be S Z and in the other directions X Y and X Z it will come. And these are three cases which we are considering it. Here the G vector is here down, okay. Then if evolved sphere is passing like this then S will be negative, right. And in this one the evolved sphere is passing through both the lattice points, okay. When the evolved sphere passes through both the lattice points, okay, S will be equal to 0 correct and here it is s is greater than 0. 
So these are all the sign conventions which are used. So essentially what happens is that when we look in the diffraction pattern, if this is the center, okay, 0, 0, 0, and if this is G, okay, if the Kikuchi pattern lies like this away from it, then this is positive as, okay. Suppose Kikuchi pattern is lying like this, then this will be negative as, okay, this is positive as, this is negative as. If the Kikuchi pattern lies exactly on it, then S equals 0. This is how it will appear in the diffraction pattern, okay. This clear? So, what I have shown here, the same thing which we can do it. Okay. You saw that, that if we have spots which are symmetric is there, okay. if the Kikuchi pattern passes like this, then what is going to happen? This is the incident beam direction, this is the scattered direction, correct? K0 and K it will be. Is it not? Okay. But if you see with respect to this part, this is central spot, this is plus G. Okay. It is not symmetrically disposed. What is the normal to this uh, row? It will be in this direction, correct? It is not passing through that. If it has to do, what we should do? We should tilt it in such a way, the QQG pattern now if it passes through this, then at middle portion of it, if it comes, the Kikuchi line, okay, between the spots, that is what is being shown here. Here if you see it, this is 0 to 0 vector is being there, this is 2 bar 0 vector, this is 0, 0. If the Kikuchi pattern, one bright line comes here and the dark line comes here, then this is perfectly central, okay. And this is a symmetric pattern. Similarly, with respect to 0, 2, 0, 0 direction, the lines will, Kikuchi line has to pass like this. Here, the Kikuchi line will pass like this. Like this, various Kikuchi patterns will come. This, we can observe it and tilt it and accurately get it. That when we tilt it, the sample, we are essentially, the spot pattern remains the same, only by a small angle of a tilt, the Kikuchi pattern is what we are. A Kikuchi pattern will be shifting, okay. And this is how for 0, 0, 1 the Kikuchi, the spots pattern will look like, okay. And 1, 0, 1 pole, this is how it will come. So if we go along this Kikuchi pattern, we will be reaching this one. If I go along this pattern, I will be reaching 1, 1, 2, then 1, 1, 1, like that. So if this pattern is there, what I am doing it is, I am not looking at what tilt I am doing it. I am going along that, keeping the Kikuchi pattern when I do it, I can go from one zone to another zone accurately, okay. That is what essentially can be done. So this can be used to tilt from one zone to another zone, okay. Is it clear? This is essentially for a cubic system, that is Kikuchi pattern which has been generated for the various zones, okay with the diffraction spots also there, is being superimposed one on top of the other, okay. This sort of uh, uh, patterns are also available, a standard one, which one can keep it along with oneself when one is doing a microscopy, okay. And here what is being done is that same spots, okay, the same Kikuchi band is being shown how they will be going like this. This is essentially the same figure you see, take it, okay, remove all those parts, it has been simulated but ex exactly the same pattern, okay. These sort of plots are also available which one can use it when one does microscopy, okay. Mostly people who look at uh, microscopy of uh, bulk samples, they will require this but not for nanoparticle, okay. So here, I uh, just shown what I had explained earlier, okay. How if this is the sort of a diffraction pattern which we have, how the Kikuchi pattern should appear for it to be symmetrical. Okay, this also I will uh, give it as some exercise which one can try to work it out, okay, and find out, okay. 
this is from an MGO crystal, okay, Kikuchi pattern which has been taken for 001 actual pattern, this is 012, this is 1 bar 1 3. Correspondingly, I had just put the stereogram also, you can see that from here to in this direction 1 bar 1 3 will come after some tilt and in this particular direction 0 1 1 if you tilt it 0 1 2 will come. Okay. And if I move along the Kikuchi pattern in this particular direction, I will be re going here further if I tilt it and reach, I will be reaching 1 bar 1 1 pattern. Here if I go and tilt and go it 0 1 1 I will be reaching, but here it has been stopped with uh, 0 1 2 pole which comes somewhere here. Okay. We can tilt beyond it. So, as we tilt and go along in a particular direction, various types of uh, uh, diffraction patterns corresponding to different zones will appear. Which one? Kikuchi pattern because uh, that is also we are getting in between two spots. No, that is a construction of a Kikuchi uh, Brillouin zone. Construction of a Kikuchi uh, the, the Brillouin zone which we considered is essentially how to construct the Brillouin zone with respect to a k vector notation. Here what we are trying to look at it is, is that the Kikuchi pattern is nothing but the diffraction spot which is there. Okay. If we tilt and then uh, bring it uh, the sample, okay. what is the tilt which should be used so that we can find out the orientation of the sample accurately. That is the beam direction can be determined accurately, but there is a relationship between the Bragg diffraction and the Brillouin zone boundary that just does not change, that has nothing to do with this. Okay. It appears similar the figure, right? Because one is uh, uh, because there are two diffraction patterns which are taking place here. One, a parallel beam which gives rise to a diffraction pattern, which is a spot pattern like this. In addition to it, part of the beam has lost some energy, and this energy loss has taken place as some specific locations where atoms are present on the sample. So, those regions are acting as new source for electron beam and that also gives rise to diffraction in the sample. But since the beam is for this case of Kikuchi diffraction the beam is within the sample, if we tilt the sample okay, the Kikuchi pattern also will tilt along with it that diffraction spot that it does not come appear as a diffraction spot, it appears as a line. That line tilts along with it, you understand that. So, that line we have brought it to the center, but both of them are two diffraction spots superimposed one on the other, okay. You understand that? that when we are tilting the scattering center does not change. Eh? When we are tilting, yeah. the Kikuchi line also moves. So, yeah. So the the scattering center does not move because that is within the sample. In the other case it is outside, only the sample is being tilted, right. The beam direction is changing. Now, we wanted to use this phenomena to find out what is the beam direction in which by moving it and keeping if the beam falls here, the Kikuchi pattern and the other Kikuchi pattern bright and dark lines falls exactly on this, then the beam direction is uh, along whatever is the k vector which we have chosen. So, if we wanted to be symmetric with respect to these two then it has to be shifted such a way that one comes here that the other one comes here at the middle. Okay. That is only the alignment, that is because two diffraction type of diffraction patterns we are trying to use both of them. Okay. That is one gives the large number of spots, another gives some lines, but we wanted to use the one which gives the line to find out the beam orientation exactly we wanted to determine that for that purpose it is being used. Is it clear? Okay. So, this is an another case where you can see that the diffraction spots if you look at it they appear the same, but if you look carefully there is a background there is a pattern which you can see. This it is almost symmetric here, here it has shifted coming down okay. that means that the Kikuchi pattern has shifted. So, this that is 
how it has come from this region to this region when I move from here, I take one pattern from here, I get it like this. From this region I take it, that means that some small deviation has taken place. That means that if this region satisfies exact bra condition, when I reach this region is not satisfying the bra condition. How can it happen? Only if either there is a small angle boundary is there or some small tilt has taken place or a twist has occurred. Okay. That information how much is the twist from this deviation we can determine it. Okay. This has been done in this case, it was found that this is a 0 0.6 degree misorientation twist boundary it is. Is this clear? This I just wanted to introduce it, but we will take it up in the next class convergent beam diffraction. What is the, the case which we considered for Kikuchi diffraction is that due to inelastic scattering, correct. There is no need that inelastic scattering has to take place for Kikuchi diffraction to take place. Suppose I make a beam converge onto the sample surface okay, and then that beam will be diverging from here okay, and what will the lens do? The lens will just converge them to some point disk on the back focal plane, correct. But with respect to some different plane, one direction of the beam will be satisfying a perfect bra condition, right. And corresponding to that, we will be getting some line in this one, which will be a dark line and away from it we will be getting a bright line. So, if we use either a convergent or a divergent beam, we can always get a Kikuchi pattern, that is one thing. And uh, the other is, if I converge a beam, this is equivalent to for this particular beam direction, this is the eval sphere, correct. For the beam which is coming in this direction, this is the eval sphere, in between the eval sphere is like that. You remember that by playing with the tilting of the eval sphere, we can get more diffraction spots into the pattern. So, what will happen is that all the spots which are coming in between will be coming in the diffraction pattern. This is what is being done. You see this here, the eval sphere is touching here, this gives one pattern. Then the outermost pattern which comes, this central spot come from which uh, condition g dot r equals 0, right or delta k dot r equals 0 and the next one comes g dot, I will put it as r 1, I will put it as r 2 equal to 1, right. So, that is nothing but one plane, this is an another evolved, another plane in the reciprocal lattice section. So, simultaneously we are able to image different reciprocal lattice sections and if we index all of them, we can reconstruct and get the reciprocal lattice. If we have the reciprocal lattice, then from that we can try to construct the real lattice, correct. That can be done using this. Then this sort of black lines which are coming, okay, in this one if you look at it, they exhibit some symmetry. Even here if you look at it, there is a symmetry, this exhibits actually a threefold symmetry. You look at the spots, these spots exhibit a six-fold symmetry, right. Like both hexagonal lattice as well as a cubic lattice will exhibit a six-fold symmetry as far as the diffraction spots are concerned. That is by looking at a normal parallel beam diffraction spot, looking at one diffraction pattern, we will not be able to differentiate between whether it is a hexagonal lattice or whether it is a cubic lattice. But if you look at these Kikuchi lines which are coming, these extra lines which we can see it, from them we can make out that this has got only a threefold symmetry. That is an indication that the crystal structure is essentially a, a cubic type. Okay. This sort of information that we will come to later in the next class. Okay. So, essentially using convergent beam diffraction, we can get a lot of information. The information which we can get is precise lattice parameter determination, okay. the stacking sequence along some beam direction we can get it. Convergent beam what you do it is the beam which is falling onto the sample, okay. we, 
uh, using the condenser lens, we have we can use a parallel beam, or you can convert the beam to a point. That's what is being done. But in many modern microscopes, there are facilities by which you can press a button; it will make the beam convergent with a particular angle. That's possible. But we can do it manually also. When we started, when we started doing it on a microscope, we used to converge it and get the pattern. Okay, that's always possible. Then we have to measure what the convergent angle, which we will not know. But modern equipments. facilities are there we can put it and say this is the convergent angle okay there are two types of kikuchi uh, lines are going to be there i will come to all the details of it so but what i mentioned is that even with the coherent beam also if the beam is a convergent beam if it falls onto a sample or a divergent beam okay we can still get a kikuchi line in the diffract the kikuchi line is that suppose this is a sample which is all other planes are not diffracting then when this beam uh, this forms a spot it will be of uniform intensity right and if particular plane is uh, satisfying bra condition then in the direct beam in that region okay there will not be any intensity so what will happen is that when we get a central spot like this okay in this you will find that the region which doesn't satisfy there is a reduction in intensity one line you will be seeing it sharply that's a kikuchi line okay that is how these lines are appearing on this these are all taken under condition sample there are many other effects are there which we will be talking about it in the next class